welcome to From the Shed End Podcast with myself, T. Dot. As always, thank you very much for joining me. Now, before we get into the content, please make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. All you need to do is smash the like button and the subscribe button below, and you've done the, your best part of the work for today already. So we do appreciate everyone that has already subscribed to the channel. But if you haven't, please make sure you subscribe and also appreciate everyone who watched the previous video as well. It was a difficult one to do after our defeat to Everton, but I do appreciate everyone that watch that video as well and also if you if you do listen to our podcast don't forget to subscribe there on spotify or apple podcast as well we will have another podcast coming out very soon where we'll be talking about a lot of things that have happened over the last couple of weeks with chelsea and the last thing i'll say before we jump into the match preview is also we haven't forgotten to speak about the change in ownership at chelsea we are going to speak about it it's just something that I think we need to talk about once we've got facts that we can talk about when we understand a bit more clearly who is going to be um, at the hot seat at Chelsea as well and things like that. I think we need to understand the the logistics around everything that's going to be happening in, in hopefully in the next couple of weeks. Um, so yeah, we haven't forgotten about it. We will be talking about the change in ownership, the sale of the club, all of that stuff coming up very, very soon. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you do not miss that, that episode as well. But let's get into it. Of course, Course, we're talking about the match uh, preview Wolves Chelsea massive game for us really after a very mixed bag of performances when we take it all the way back to West Ham when we think back to Real Madrid when we think back to Manchester United when we think back to um, Everton you know big games that we've had and I, I did say I did say in the match uh, review for Everton they were going to be up for the game they didn't disappoint us they were there they were there for the taking, but if, if if I'm honest, they definitely played their game a lot better than we did. So, you know, have to, we have to credit Everton for that. But we've got to look forward. We've got a massive game. Thomas Tuchel has just given us um, some updates in his, his press conference earlier on today. No Angolo Kante, no Jorginho, no Ben Chilwell. Of, as, as we already knew and Callum Hudson-Odoi although he's back in training it's too early for, for Callum Hudson-Odoi to be featured in tomorrow's match day squad so what does that mean for Chelsea he did actually make a small remark when speaking about Romelu Lukaku in terms of whether he might start tomorrow my my guess is we might see Romelu Lukaku in the team tomorrow we've got four games left we're going to want to try and get as many players that we want out the club out the window and I think Lukaku being one of our biggest assets to date at the club I think if he does go or he wants to go and and it almost seems like the club don't want him there two calls not really fond of him either you do kind of sense you might have to put him in a shop window in a couple of games whether that's in the midweek game against Leeds or whether that's tomorrow against Wolverhampton I do think Lukaku might start maybe with a Kai Havertz up front as well. And obviously we have that issue again now, kind of in midfield where we, we, we've we obviously lost two key players in Angola Kante and uh, Jorginho. Big, big, ma massive losses. You don't really expect to see Sal Neguez in that squad for tomorrow. So my, my guess would be potentially, potentially we might see Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Mateo Kovacic in midfield. But the, I do, I do want to talk about the, the lineup for tomorrow, which I've got here, which I'm going to bring up now. Now, I know I said in my previous video that I do not want to see Lukaku in a Chelsea shirt again, unless he, and, and I did caveat that with, unless he puts in a brilliant performance in the next four games and goes on to have a brilliant preseason. But from what Thomas Tuchel said in the press conference earlier today, I would not be surprised to see Romelu Lukaku in tomorrow's lineup. I also think Mason Mount potentially playing just behind Havertz and Lukaku as a, a front two might might work a bit better against um, Wolves. And another reason why I would put Lukaku in the team, Willy Bolly, Connor Cody, a two, two big, big centre-backs. And I think set pieces, you need someone who's going to be able to try and challenge for the ball. You need someone who's going to be strong up front. I look at a Christian Pulisic and, um, you know, Timo Werner, Hakim Ziyech, I think in this kind of game, you do need someone who's going to be able to to, to manoeuvre in that box in a way that makes it slightly difficult for the Wolves centre-backs as well. And we have to call it right as well. I think the, first, the, the last two Wolves games um, that we've played against Wolves have, have been nil-nils. So 
uh, yeah, if this is a time for Lukaku to to come up trumps and try and score some goals, it's tomorrow. I think for for not just for the for the squad for Chelsea, but almost for himself. If he is keen on a move away from Chelsea, now is his time to to prove to other clubs what he can do. I still think it's going to be an option um, of a loan for Lukaku. I can't really see anyone coming in in terms of a transfer fee for him. But if some if we can get some sort of deal done for Lukaku, if we can make deals. That's another big thing once the own ownership's been been completed in terms of that changeover. But if we can get a loan deal for Lukaku, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be annoyed about that. I think I'd be pretty happy. But in terms of the squad, let me quickly go through it as well. Obviously, Mendy in goal makes sense to me. I think, you know, Mendy, you know, there's talk about Kepa wanting wanting to get out of the club. So for me, it kind of makes sense to keep Mendy in goal. Um and and Kepa rightfully so wants to move on. I think he's, I've said before, I think he's too good to be, um, to be a number two. He's too good to be a number two. He's proved himself under Thomas Sukor on numerous occasions, more so when um, Mendy was at the African Cup of Nations. You know, he proved himself then. So I, I understand his frustrations not playing as many games. It's unfortunate you can only play one goalkeeper at a time, but, you know, it is what it is. It'd be a shame to see him go, but you would expect a move maybe for Kepa in the summer. I can see that happening. Right wing back, left wing back. I've gone for the obvious options in, in Reese James and Marcus Alonso. Reese James, um, for me, I, I think I've said it before. I prefer him as a right wing back as opposed to the right centre back, which I know Thomas Tuchel's fond of him. I think Thomas Tuchel's um, with the idea that he potentially might use Reese James as a right centre-back, depending on transfer strategy in, in terms of who we can bring in as a centre-back, whether it be Kunde or Fafana or whoever else we've been linked with in, in that role. But for me, especially against Wolves, who normally line up very similar to, to how I've got the formation for tomorrow's game, five at the back, um, you know, the two midfield, the three up front. I, I think for me, Reese James would, would, would benefit more as a right wing-back. I think the three uh, centre backs, you know, Chalabar for me has to start over Aspiaqueta. I think the previous game that we, you know, a lot of the games that we've watched, especially the Everton game last weekend, you know, Aspiaqueta is a player for me that we kind of still need at the club, but just not someone who I would want to see as a regular starter. Yes, he's the club captain. Yes, he he's he's been a brilliant servant, but when you've got a game where you you kind of now we're talking four games we still need a lot of points to to secure at least top three you know to third position in the league so I think Trevor Chalabar um, deserves a, an opportunity tomorrow alongside Thiago Silva and of course it would be difficult as much as we know he's leaving to leave Rudiger out of the team he's just potentially for me been the best centre back at the club alongside Thiago Silva so it's a, it's a difficult one, I, you know. He, he, I can potentially see Aspiaqueta playing ahead of Chalaba, but if it was me, and I'm thinking long term, I'm thinking for the future. I'm thinking, you know, you want to get that cohesion between Silva and Chalaba. I would I would start that from now. You want to build out that relationship. It's going to be crucial, I think, come next season, especially if we don't bring in the, the correct players or the right players that we want in the summer. I think we have to have Chalabar playing as much football, regular football, as, as much as we can, rather than having him in and out of the team, especially when he's not injured. There's For me, there's no reason why he shouldn't be in that squad. So that would be my back, my back line with the two wing backs. As I said before, you know, we've lost Angolo Kante, we've lost Jorginho. I can't see Saul Neguez coming into this team at this late stage of the of the season now. I think we can potentially say that he won't be at the club next season. So it'll be interesting. I mean, you know, you could potentially put Chalabro in midfield and Aspley Aqueta at the right centre-back. But I think based on form, based on how well Kovacic, who... It celebrates his birthday today, but Kovacic, how how well he's played for us this season. And Ruben Loftus-Cheek, who's shown in spells that he can play very well, he can drive forward with the ball, he can create chances, he can make try and make something happen. Um, I, I think tomorrow, for me, that two in midfield would be the, the, the two that I'd go for in, in Kovacic and Lu, Ruben Loftus-Cheek. I did mention before, like I said, I would not have Lukaku in the team. I'm eating my words for the next 12 hours or so. I will put Lukaku back in the team. 
for the simple reason, as I said before, I think if he does leave or he wants to go and Thomas Tuchel, as I said, doesn't really look fond of him, we have to put him in the shop window. We have to play him to see what other clubs are interested in him. Um, there's been talk obviously around a couple of the clubs from Italy I think maybe Barcelona earlier this week said they might be interested at a reduced fee so if we can get if we can get some money for him we have to play him it's as simple as that and and to be honest as well this could actually this game could suit Lukaku it could actually suit Lukaku in terms of how we play how Wolves are set up the inconsistent form just as much as we have that Wolves have been going through this season you know, Mason Mount slightly playing behind them, I think would work well for, for uh, the, the two midfield in terms of Ruben Loftus, Sheik and Kovacic as well. Yeah. Get that link up play between the three of them. And obviously Kai Havertz as well, who hasn't had the best of games. We, you know, we bigged him up quite a bit throughout the season. Again, very inconsistent, but maybe more consistent than some of the other front three um, that we've had in the team previously. But for me, Kai Havertz would partner Lukaku up front we just, yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of a self-explanatory team, if I'm honest. I think it's a team that kind of speaks for itself. It's going to be interesting because I don't think Bruno Large is, is at the game tomorrow. I think he's caught COVID. So I did say in a previous video that I do think that, that it does have an impact on, on the players' performance. I also said the last two meetings against these two clubs have been nil-nil. Surely we don't get a third. But we've, we've been very good at our three o'clock kickoffs. I think the fact that we've had a week's rest as well should play into our favour, should help us as we go forward and we, we try and finish the season on the high. We've obviously got to get some form, some momentum as we go into the next Saturday's final against Liverpool in the FA Cup as well. So we have two big games this week in terms of Wolves and Leeds. But I think I'm confident. I think I, I watching the game against Everton was probably one of the worst games I've watched in a very long time as a as a Chelsea fan as a Chelsea fan and it has to it can only get better from from now for me it has to get better we have to put in a, a better performance Tuchel has to get the formation right the subs right as well the subs are going to be key we have a big game as I said against Leeds as well who again very similar to Everton are going to be fighting for points they're down there in the scrap for relegation they're up for it. They're, they're a very difficult team to play against. They love to, to to bomb forward, to drive forward, but they do like to concede a lot of goals. So I, I think for me personally, this would be a game that I would expect us to get three points from. We'd be able to turn up. A game at Stamford Bridge that, I, again, you know, home, home advantage, no manager for Wolves. You expect us to try and put in a better performance than we did against, against Everton, uh, which is a poor performance for me, in my opinion. But I'm going to do my prediction. I'm going to go for Chelsea 2, Wolves 0. I do think we'll keep a clean sheet, providing that we defensively are switched on. We're defensively talking to each other. We just have to be defensively solid at that back. Uh, the, the back three have to be solid. And we have to try and get get forward as much as we can in terms of Reese James and Marcus Alonso. And whoever does partner Kai Havertz, whether that's a front three of Werner and Pulisic or whoever it might be, Hakim Ziyech or Lukaku, they have to be on their A game. They have to be on their A game. We have We have too many games to throw away where we don't get points and we end up either getting top four or missing out on top four we still have our own destiny in our own hands so for me I think you know we've got we've got to try and get this put to bed now ideally for me a win against Wolves a win against Leeds would make me more comfortable going into that that FA Cup final next weekend as well so trying to stay positive as a Chelsea fan it's hard at the moment of course a lot of things have gone on this season but I'm going to go 2-0 a positive reaction after the, the Everton defeat and I'm going to hope that we also get another three points against Leeds in the week as well. But as I said at the start of the video, if you haven't already, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Smash the like button. Comment below. Let me know your thoughts as well. And also make sure you check out From the Shed End on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. I will leave all the links in the description. This has been T-Dart from the Shed End. Thank you very much for watching and we'll be back very soon.